with Martha like you've never seen her before. Next, we're digging into the Martha Stewart archive to find our favorite moments, crashes, and smashes, spills, and drills. Our favorite celebrity guest, Conan O'Brien. This saw needs Viagra. <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell. Now you're getting a little too thin. That's oh. the first time someone's ever said to me you're getting too thin. <laughs> Zach Braff. She could help. Start the new year off on the right foot. Next. having a very happy new year and staying warm in this cold January weather. We here at Martha are still on our winter break, but I thought this would be a great time to bring you some of our favorite um, uh, celebrity moments from years past. I find that January is a great time to reflect on the past and when thinking about the many things I've done over the years, I realize that a lot of them involved some of my very favorite celebrities like Conan O'Brien, Rosie O'Donnell, and the wonderful actor-director Zach Braff. Um, I'm going to show you those moments, but first I want to share with you something that I'm very excited about. This month, Martha Stewart Living Magazine is celebrating its 15th anniversary. And I can't believe that 15 years have gone by since we issued our premiere issue, our preview issue, we called it. Uh, and this is the real thing. This is the first issue. Uh, we printed about 508,000 copies of this first issue. Uh, we went down to R.R. R. Donnelly in Glasgow, Kentucky. Uh, I and Gail Towie and a couple other people. Um, our staff at that time uh, numbered 38 people. Uh, 15 years ago, we started this magazine. And when I looked through this magazine, although there's not a lot of advertisements because uh, we just hadn't uh, really persuaded the advertising community that this was going to be a great magazine, uh, I knew that everybody would really respond favorably to it because it was so full of amazing things, including good things, which uh, started 15 years ago. Uh, it really made me happy to, to uh, realize that Good Things was in the first issue. And I kind of remember every single shoot day, I saved my calendars from uh, years and years and years ago, including, and I went back through 1990s calendar, we did most of the photography for this issue in August and September of 1990. Uh, and we did um, a, a lot. We, and I, during that time, I was also traveling all over the United States, promoting the uh, new magazine, promoting all the books, promoting uh, what we were going to do. We had no idea at the time, of course, that we were doing something even bigger than a magazine, that we were really founding a wonderful American company, which now has 650 employees, has uh, the television show, has uh, several wonderful magazines, including Martha Stewart Weddings, Kids, Everyday Food, Body and Soul. Uh, we have... Um, uh, wonderful books being published every year. This year we published uh, the Baking Handbook as well as the Martha Rules as well as some special issues of the magazines. Uh, and if you look at the, um, the winter issue of Weddings, wait, oh, that cover just drives me crazy. It's so beautiful. But uh, we also have our merchandise for Mass Market and signature furniture. And we are doing, we've been very, very busy in 15 years. I think we have accomplished a lot and really couldn't have done any of it without all of you out there. Our customers, our readers, our viewers. You have been so loyal and so steadfast, and I just want to thank all of you because it's the greatest. And uh, this year also marks the first full year of our new television show, a year that we're really looking forward to. I'm sure that this new show will include many funny moments like the ones you're about to see from the old show. We collected our favorites. We call them bloopers, and no matter how many times we watch them, we still find them pretty funny. Take a look. <laughs> So sometimes it's a little bit cold. You can... Oh! 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 Oh
one. Oops, oops, sorry. <laughs> okay, I will burn the tortilla. <laughs> I know, it seems silly. <laughs> <laughs> to the barn! <laughs> One of my favorites, and I can't wait to have a taste, is Susan Sugarman's cream cheese cake. Grab it, Martha. Grab it. Oh, oh. look. It, oh. Oh, oh. oh, it's so good. Oh. oh. Is that bad? So what's in here? Two so sticks of... So we've got two sticks of butter and a cup of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> April Fools. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> okay. So where do we pick up from? Clean the bowl. We're you're scraping the bowl. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> it's out. Oh, saw needs Viagra. <laughs> okay, just go. Oh, wow. You're getting a little too thin now. Too thin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That's the first time someone's ever said to me, "You're getting too thin." <laughs> she could help. I mean, she's supposed to be Martha Stewart. She's not doing anything. Yes. I'll break the eggs. How many eggs? Um. <laughs> a half a cup of flour. <laughs> Look up. <laughs> what did you have for lunch? <laughs> oh. We always liked this <laughs> little. I've seen carrots like this one. <laughs> one of these melons is ripe and one isn't. How do you pick the one that's ready to use? And next to it, the woolly, hairy um, balls. These are hairy balls. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I don't know how you do this every day. I just Neither need do I. tranquilizers. So let's, let's, um, <laughs> I have one. You want one? <laughs> what do you have? No, I don't have any tranquilizers. <laughs> Nothing's more distressing than taking a piece of clothing off a hanger and finding the marks of the hanger. <laughs> Nothing in the whole world is <laughs> Norma! Upended Martha Stewart right on her can. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make a refreshing and very delicious summer drink. Do you want to take over from here? <laughs> this is much harder than doing it myself. I would rather do it myself. I thought you wouldn't be laughing like this if you were doing it yourself. We can't use any of this crap. You know, you can't use a thing. <laughs> Well, we didn't think we could use any of that crap, <laughs> but we've used that blooper so many times. Uh, Susan was trying to make her cheesecake that she had made. We counted something like 82 times in the past, but she couldn't quite get to it on television. And that was a t very painful, but very funny two hours. Well, uh, thank goodness we weren't live back then. One of the very best things about this new show for me is you, the studio audience. And one of my favorite segments is Ask Martha. Today I'm taking your questions about past shows. So who has a question in the audience for me? Ah, hi. I'm Lauren Romanowski from Guilford, Connecticut. Hi. And I really like the impromptu and unscripted scenes that you've had with Andy Rooney and Bill Cosby. And I know they make some funny innuendos and you seem to blush. So I was just wondering how you maintain your composure through the show. Um, well, blushing is good, I think, and uh, it's natural. And, um, and I don't mind being embarrassed. I think that that's really um, uh, one, of my, one of my good qualities is that I don't mind being made fun of. I mean, look how much fun people have made of me for several years. Um, but, um, and if it's in good, you know, if it's in good humor, uh, it's okay. So, uh, and, and you just swallow and breathe deeply and then go on to the next thing. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Martha. My name is Susan Jacobson from East Hartford, Connecticut. Hi. And I was wondering, what was it like cooking with Julia Child? Well, I really considered Julia Child to be my mentor. Um, I had never met her uh, before I wrote my first book, Entertaining, uh, but I had cooked every single one of her recipes. 
Uh, and after Julia, wow, everybody was interested. And then the French chefs came here, uh, opened lots of wonderful restaurants. Then the Japanese came and started to cook all kinds of wonderful uh, Japanese food. Chinese food was always sort of part of our culture, but then uh, even uh, more um, complicated Chinese uh, occurred. So I just think she really, really was like the mother of great cooking in America. Another question. Hi, Martha. Hi. My name is Carolyn Robleski, and I'm from Seaside Park, New Jersey. And I'm curious, do you still have time to go to all your tag sales? Oh, well, this past weekend, I went, uh, my friend, my next door neighbor, uh, Sasha, picked me up at 7.30. We went to the Artisans show in Wilton, Connecticut. It was a fantastic show. And I met many, many new artisans all doing fantastic crafts uh, projects and uh, found some wonderful glasses and some wonderful um, uh, furniture. So we had a great time. And then I went from there right straight into New York to the pier shows and went to all the, the, all the pier shows and, and uh, bought some good stuff. So uh, we had a, a great time. I try to do that all the time. It just piques my curiosity and, and fulfills uh, that, that kind of uh, search that goes on constantly with all of us at Martha Stewart Living. Thank you very much. I think you're gonna really love today's show. It's a little bit of a stroll down memory lane. We're gonna look back at some of our favorite funny celebrities. So, curl up on the couch or get out your crocheting and get ready to laugh. We'll be right back with Rosie O'Donnell. Later on, Martha, Conan O'Brien brings out the drill. Martha's mom makes her famous meatloaf, and a very good thing you won't want to miss. One of my favorite guests is Rosie O'Donnell, and what I love about her is that she's always so eager to learn new things, and she amazes herself when she masters them. In this segment, I taught her how to make potato chips, and we had a fun time gossiping like girlfriends in the kitchen. Take a look. So, Rosie, the last time that I was on your show, I brought you lots of good hors d'oeuvres, and you sort of, like, turned your nose up at most of them? No, 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 no. Some were enjoyable. I liked the rolled goat cheese and the hot pepper stuff, caviar. But you like simplicity. Yeah. And you love chips. Yeah. So I thought today maybe you'd like to learn how to make homemade potato chips. The kids would love them. They're oh, kind right. of fun. And uh, I wanted to teach you how to use a different kind of mandolin that you, than you're used to. You're used to the musical mandolin, probably. I am. Probably. In fact, I'd never even seen this. Well, this is the blade right here. Okay. And it's set perfectly to slice the potato into a waffle. All right. And so yes. hold the mandolin with that hand. You're doing okay. it right. Uh -huh. And then now press down like that. Okay. Okay. Straight Keeping down. your fingers away. Yeah. Okay. Now that first slice is not really going to be anything. So okay. How so now turn it the other way. Now, now hold, you had it this way. Now yes. turn it exactly 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Got you. Okay. Now go again. Now pick that one up. This is my first Look. waffle chip I ever made. Look. Martha, you I did, did pretty well. You did it. Now don't push quite so hard because you want it a little thinner than that. Okay. okay? All right. If you're not going to fry them right away, and mm -hmm. even if you are, put them in ice water. Ice water. It gets the starch out of the potatoes. Of course. You know all about potatoes, don't you? I'm Irish. Come on. Martha. That's how you're doing. See. That one looks much better. Yeah. Oh, oh. Martha. <laughs> check that out. <laughs> That one was, that one's mine, remember. Okay. That good one was mine. Okay. So you're getting into this. Look. Oh, look. Hava. Look. Nagila Hava. <laughs> Nagila. Do you ever sing while you cook? Oh, all the time. I've never seen you sing on this show. No, I, but I don't do that. I mean, no. no. How come? I don't know why. I think they would shoot me. They would? Those guys out there. But there's a lot of joy in singing. Now you're getting a little too thin now. Too thin. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. That's the first time someone's ever said to me, you're getting too thin. <laughs> Just thought I'd bring that up. So get now, the out when you're too. going to be frying these, you must dry them. Don't put wet potatoes into the oil. The oil has to be 375 degrees. Which, perfect. Okay. There, you can just try one. See how nicely it starts to enjoyable. Cook. It won't splatter too much and no, burn us? No. Just so you gently place. Would yeah. you say that? Now, this is peanut oil. Peanuts. You can do it in olive oil. Uh -huh. You can do it in canola oil. What's the benefit of peanut? Why'd you choose peanut? Uh, peanut oil has a high smoke temperature, so it's not going to start smoking. Oh, at... oh. Do you have to dump them one at a time like we're doing? Yeah, I like to, because these are special chips. You know, they're so pretty. And now this is a, a Chinese strainer, and these are very handy to have when you're doing your own homemade chips. Because of the delicacy of it? Oh, yeah. Yes. 
This You're a very be, good student. See, this be, well, I love to learn this yeah, stuff. This yeah. would be my first chip I've ever had homemade. Oh, good. We have to hang out more. <gasps> oh my God! I'm telling you, there's a whole world out there. Well, we owe you. Derek Jeter a dinner. Derek Jeter? Yeah, he wants to go out to dinner with us. With you and me? Yeah. Would you go out? Of course. Oh, okay. He's dying to go out with us for barbecue. I met him on your show. Really? You yeah. got along? You clicked? Oh yeah, he's great. He's, he's a nice guy. He's got pretty eyes, doesn't oh, he? He's a very, but he's a very good baseball player. He is. What That's position does he play? The most important. He plays know? second base. <laughs> Oh, does he? Does anyone know? <laughs> no, he <laughs> yeah, shortstop. He was near second base. Oh, I but knew, you know what? I knew you said it, was... it with such conviction that I, know, I believed that's why, you. That's one of my terrible faults. Uh, it's not a fault. But I think it, that's but good. Shortstop is close to second base. Very close. So when I you know, turn on the television for that one second and I see him there, he looks like he's on second base. You know what? He often covers second. <laughs> I'd like to have him at your house. Okay. I think it's nicer than okay. mine. We'll invite him. Although I have such a rose garden, you wouldn't believe. You do? Better than Barbara Streisand's? No, I want to brag. I don't want to boast. Barbara Streisand sent me three rose bushes that are now in my garden. Oh, nice. Which ones? The Barbara Streisand rose. Oh, oh, she sent me one, too. Whatever. I don't mean to brag. No, I was a little braggity. I was saying something oh, special, and you totally deflated me. <laughs> sorry. sorry. It's okay. I know. It's just, it's just but the nice. Derek Jeter thing was good. Yeah. Thanks for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. Look, something. very important, as salt. they come out, to put a little bit of kosher salt or sea salt okay. on your potato chips. A little chips. bit, as they yeah. come out of the Now, I want you to taste over. these new ones. Okay, there taste. you go. This is yours, actually. I remember that one. Are you sure? Uh-huh. Okay. Good? Martha, I have to say, that is very enjoyable. It's a guaranteed good time when Rosie stops by. Next, another one of my very favorite funny people, Conan O'Brien. Later on, Martha, from the hit show Scrubs, Zach Braff and one of Martha's favorite good things. Don't go away. Every time Conan O'Brien has been a guest on our show, we've had so much fun. And actually, every time I've been on his show, we've had a lot of fun, too. He's uh, quite um, one for timing. And he always gets me to swig some hideous liquor or <laughs> beer or something. And he actually got me to eat a burger, you know, one of those fast food burgers, which I had never had in my whole life. He got me to eat one on the show. And uh, one time I invited him to come on and make a peg rack out of a birch branch. And it required using some woodworking tools. Well, let's just say I was a little worried about my safety and his. Watch this. If you're a night owl, you may recognize this tall, handsome redhead. And he is handsome, who's sometimes a little out of control. Not at all. No? No, I'm very calm. He's Conan O'Brien. Mm -hmm. And so far, he's behaving. I thought he'd enjoy doing something with his hands, like turning this branch this birch branch into a pig rack to hold, well, a hat, a leash, or even his apron. This is not my apron, by the way. I don't have an apron. Oh, well, do you have anything that you'd One like to One of your have? people put this on me. They actually have a gun here that they fire at you <laughs> and an apron wraps around you. So, uh, do you have anything impressive. that you'd like to hang on this rack? Uh, yes, um, my, my pipes, my, uh, my leashes. I have a dog, I have a golden retriever, so I can hang a leash Good. on it. Yeah. Um, what else do you carry around with you outside? Well, your jacket. You might have a jacket every now and then, right? That's right. Every now and then I wear a stylish jacket. I can hang that up when I, when I come home. Well, what really goes on with this is finding a nice birch branch, something that's maybe blown down in a storm. Conan and I were walking around in the woods this weekend. We had a wonderful walk yes. together, and uh, we were holding hands, and we came across this birch tree that had fallen over. Right. So we, we did didn't... not... We did not cut down our We did not cut tree. down this birch. I started to try and cut down a birch, but you stopped me. You said that's wrong, and it was on someone else's property. <laughs> and I didn't care. I just said, let's take it and run. But you properly said, take one that's already and fallen. All you need to, on your little hike. Oh my God. Is, <laughs> Look, <laughs> if, you, if you start to cut down your neighbor's tree. A switchblade. It's but a good thing. This is a very good saw. This is a Felco, and this is a portable saw that you can just. Carry in your... Look at that. But it works, works. It's incredible, but so, that's a good weapon. I mean, yes. in Manhattan, now, okay, it's so good now to have you, one of you these. You got your boot. branch, you got your branch. You need a lot of branches in, on which to hang things. So yes. I think this one looks really good, but you need one side that doesn't have any branches, so I'm going to take this off. Now look at your branch, that okay. big one. Because Now look and try to see which side you'll put against the wall. Uh, well, I think it's going to be this side so, against the wall. Okay, so you have to take that off. And this off. Yeah, so start sawing. Just sawing with the uh, with yeah. this thing right here. Yeah. See how you do. Okay. Nice clean cut. Cooking and sawing, he sings. Come on, 
on, free me! And then also trim, trim your pegs so that they are of an appropriate length. <laughs> I had a lot of repressed childhood memories. I, just... thought that, I thought that you were actually stronger than, than you seem. Here, I'll hold it for you. You, you saw. I am very, have you seen these arms? No. I got what's called guns. Oh, wow. Look at that right there. Fab. Isn't that amazing? Fab. Don't touch it, it hurts. Oh. <laughs> okay, now, saw. Okay. Don't, yeah, I'll hold. Okay. Is your saw complete? Wait, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's out. Oh, my either. saw needs Viagra. <laughs> okay, just go, oh, ow, <laughs> can edit it out. <laughs> Ladies, <laughs> kidding. Uh, 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 faster, faster. Uh, oh. Perfect. Ah, lovely. Now, which other one did you say you're going to take off? You're not even paying attention to this one. Okay, right here. One. This okay, one's got to go. Okay, that one. Okay. Okay. So it's good to have a helper, don't you think? Yes. If you could help me with a lot of yard work, I'd appreciate okay, it. Okay. We'll be we'll be up in Washington. I want a new septic uh, in my uh, country house. If you could help me dig a Martha Stewart septic tank, I'd be very happy. Ugh. Okay. Perfect. Now, now you have to trim these branches to an appropriate length for hanging. See this? I yep. keep it in here. Well, did you fold it up? No. You better, because then you're going to get your leg. Don't ever do that. Okay, that was crazy what yes. I just did. Okay. And I was doing it <laughs> to show you what not to do. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So now. And then you flip this up. Right. And then fold it away. Yes, but just don't then, get your fingers right. Right. And then I'm just going to no, no. put now this. Now you can put it in your pocket, and you can carry it around with you. See? Okay. Well, look, it goes right in here. Perfect. This is handy. Okay. Now, so trim off using your secateurs. What'd you say? Your secateur. You mean the clippers? Yes, your clippers. And just trim these off to a, an appropriate length. There. Secateurs. See how nice mine looks? Ready for the wall. That's it? That's it. What are we building the set of the Flintstones? This is this is a no, this rack. Is, this is rustic. Oh, no, no, I no, 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 no. What? What am I doing? That's going to be a hook, so you have to cut it off a certain length. Like here? Well, no, you want one hook. One huh? Hook. So I'd cut it right below that branch. Okay, right there. Nice and straight, straight. Nice and straight. Bob, Bob, baby. There, perfect. <laughs> right there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I need a lopper instead of a seconder. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Leverage, ah, perfecto. Mm, but trouble is, my drill is not long enough to go through. What are we gonna do about that? Well, you can change well, to a longer uh, drill size by adjusting the bit. Right, ah. Oh, you can be one of our handymen on the show. I'd like to be. Yes. I was a handyman once in a porno. We we'll talk about we that do later. do not have to hear about that. Here, come no. over to the wall. Now, you see how this you is? You need help with that. So you just choose a spot, go through. <laughs> My uh, drill came out. <laughs> what do you mean? Look at that. It, the little bit came out right in there. Oh, that's very inappropriate. It wasn't tightened properly, but uh, watch. Uh, I can uh. tighten it now. Wait, that's loosening it. Don't panic when these things happen. Sometimes mistakes occur. The important thing is to enjoy them and not to panic, right? Exactly. Okay, you didn't mean that. Now. How are you doing? Uh, pretty good. <laughs> I got, well, I got one on. Okay. Now you didn't get one on yet. No, uh, I but have anyway. to admit that my uh, my drill came off in here and I panicked and I tried to hide it from you, but I'm ashamed now. <laughs> I'm very ashamed. We'll fix that up. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Why did you even invite me to your potting shed? Well, because I thought you... you said join me in my potting shed. I, I thought you would have a very good time Didn't know we'd be here. working on anything. <sighs> okay, careful, careful. Don't okay. worry about it. Okay, I get all worked up. Don't worry about it, but look. Look how cute this looks. Come That's in. really nice, look. So now, look, I put the screw in. Right. And it has a big hole in there. Right. So we have cut exact little plugs. Well, that's so cool. And, we're, and it's white, and so you just hammer this right in to over the screw. And it makes a more perfect job. There. So it looks kind of invisible. Right. And now if you want to finish, you can put another one right here. Right here? Is yeah. this, this, is that, this No, it? that's no. The, that one. Hold it. Okay. 
and drill right through to the wall. All right. Very good. Yes, now put your screw in. You're great at this. Well, I like to help out Too when I can. you're married. I, I need a... Well, it might not work out. <laughs> Huh? Now, here's your little plug. Oh, this is the best part. I love a rubber mallet. A rubber mallet doesn't damage soft woods. Exactly. <laughs> Putting in piece of... Uh, Lovely. So now take off your apron. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> well, you're great. You're a great carpenter. Thank you very much for helping me. Thanks. With... I'm sorry. I, I I stuck the. We'll get that I fixed. Don't that worry one. about that. Sorry. You can make sure that you get me a new drill, please. I'll pay for everything. Okay. All the damage you. I've done. Thank you. Uh, there's a small fire in the bathroom, but I was going to tell you about that later. Okay. Sorry. We will take care of that later. But it's always fun to have someone like Conan on the show. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thanks, Conan. Thanks for having me. Come to think of it, he never did get me a new drill. We're waiting. We'll be right back. Next, Martha and Scrub star Zach Braff craft a doggy dining station. And Martha's mom shares her incredible meatloaf recipe. And later, you don't want to miss Martha's favorite good thing. plays Dr. J.D. Dorian on the very funny sitcom Scrubs. And I had a very interesting time when he came to visit us just after he got a new puppy. Take a look at this. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, I understand that you have a puppy. Just How got did him. you leave your puppy? I know, it was so hard. Well, they said Martha Stewart's calling, and I had to leave him. Well, show pictures, because this is a Karen Terrier. And, I brought uh, a couple, just like any true parent. Just like Toto. Oh, <laughs> wow, just a couple. Now, you know, Toto in Wizard of Oz was a Karen Terrier. I know. Now, where'd you find him? This guy had him in a box on Melrose Ave. So you rescued him, actually. Well, I, I kind of rescued him. I mean, he was selling them, but I felt like I was rescuing him from this particular character. Yes, well, you did. You did. <laughs> He's already teething, so he, oh, you know, he wants to chew everything oh, inside. That's a very cute picture. You can see him teething on something or other. There. And this is good, because this shows you his scale, because that's my foot. He's tiny. <laughs> Very cute. Well, good luck with him. Thank you so much. And um, I thought today that we would make a wonderful present for Roscoe, a doggy dining station. Which is very nice, because here's a picture food. of what he's living with right now. I don't know if you... Oh, very inappropriate. <laughs> yes. Just terrible. It needs to get Martha stewart -fied. You didn't even take the labels off the bowl, Zach. <laughs> Look at that. I know. See, that's why I need you. Oh, uh, well, I think this is a really nice thing to do. Do you think this is too uh, high for him? No, I think I mean, he's going to grow. He'll be 15 pounds, so he'll grow into his doggy dining center. Okay. Now, have you had pets before? I had dogs as a kid, but yeah. this is my first, you know, dog I can Do claim. You have time home. with your busy schedule. And I, your... I'm going to bring him to work. Oh, good. Because everyone brings their dogs to the set. Oh, great! So and... you can keep them in your trailer or in your room. Yeah. Well, we actually we shoot in an abandoned hospital, oh. so the, uh, the whole third floor, the dogs just oh, run around. Oh, great! Yeah. What fun! Yeah, it's really cool. Oh, good. Now this is the stool that uh, comes from the unpainted furniture store, and once you cut the legs off to the appropriate height, we took him. Here, let's see, and we measured him. Yeah, right from the bottom of his paws to his withers, which is on the back of his neck. So now, these are the appropriate size for a Karen Terrier. You yes. don't want too big, because you're not going to feed him a whole lot. No. And these can easily be taken out, you'll see. So um, how are you with woodworking tools? Um, I think I'm pretty good. Oh, good. I'm a little nervous to do it in front of you. Oh, but... well, don't, be, don't You can't really make too much of a mistake. These are your circles. Unless I drill into this beautiful okay. table here. Yeah, well, here. This has to slide in and stay right here. So the best thing to do is measure the inside of the bowl, four and a half inches. Make it like four and five eighths. Let's see. Yep, four and five eighths, see? Okay. Then this will slide nicely down in there. Okay. So you if you drill... You want me to drill right, right on the edge there? No, drill near the edge, and then you're going to take the jigsaw and cut around. Okay. Okay, so just so drill... So go like right yeah, there? Right, that'll be good. No, it has to go all the way through. I think I hit something. You think so? No, maybe not. I don't think so. Okay, here we go. They might have given you a very dull drill. Oops. There it is. Aha, uh -huh. now do this one too. Okay. You don't have to, yeah, oops. Now, perfect. 
Look at that. I'm a little afraid to be standing next oh, to come on. Zach over here. <laughs> okay, so now this is your jigsaw. You've used this before? Yes. Okay, so what you want to do is really start at your hole and then just jigsaw around the whole circle. Okay. I'm sure he's cute, but he has no idea what he's doing. <laughs> no, I just want you to see. <laughs> We'll edit that out. <laughs> you can start the other direction. How's that? All right. <laughs> she could help. I mean, she's supposed to be Martha Stewart. She's not doing anything. Stop. Perfect. Now you turn that a little bit. The reason it's electric <laughs> is that it does actually right. cut. Much better. That's pretty Keep good, going. right? Yep. I think we're stuck. Boy, does he need help. What are we stuck on? Did I hit the sign? Okay. Notice I'm not giving him any options. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh oh, I made a big bio. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a surgeon, No, I just play one on TV. <laughs> You're doing fun. He's gonna cut my fingers off. Excellent. I should have my own craftsman show. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them at all. That's hey, but fine. Look, you never know. You'll never know, see? Roscoe doesn't care. He does not, and it is perfect, see? Now, repeat the same thing. Full time with Zach Brown. <laughs> repeat the next circle around, and then you sand the rough edges. You'll have a little bit of sanding to do here. Yes, <laughs> and maybe some wood filler. A little bit. <laughs> we have a swap out, luckily for us. Thank God. <laughs> Here's one that... I did earlier. <laughs> Zach did earlier. And look how nice. It's been sanded and painted, but now Roscoe doesn't know it's his. That's right. So we want to make this a personalized little dining well, station for Roscoe. Best. Next, Zach and I personalize Roscoe's doggy dining station. And later, Martha's mom serves up her mouth-watering meatloaf, a viewer favorite. Welcome back. We're taking a look back at some of my favorite celebrities. In the last segment, Zach Braff and I made a doggy dining station for his new puppy. Then I showed him how to personalize it. So we've cut out a lovely Roscoe stencil, and we've sprayed this with this super adhesive. Do you know what this is? Yeah. Yeah, just, okay, like that. And then you place this wherever you want. And there's your stencil paint. Okay. We want a very subtle um, stencil on here because Roscoe is a subtle dog. Yes, very subtle. So there's your little stencil brushes. I can do, if you hand me one, I'll do one. Okay. Do you know what these are called? No. These are little pouncers. And they're flat, and that's typical of a stencil brush. Now, would you like to have centers to the R and the O? If and you've the got e? them handy, you know. yeah. Yeah, yeah. See how nice? Perfect. Make it look really professional. Now, when you're doing your taping or filming, do you have time to, to do crafts projects? Do I have time to do crafts? Is this woman out of her mind? No one has time to do crafts but her. Not oh, really. Not really. There isn't much room for crafts during the day. <laughs> <laughs> We're uh, pretty busy over I there. I bet you are. So now, not too much on the brush to start. Okay. And you can use your paper as starter. If you put too much, and now just pounce. Doesn't that look good? That looks awesome. See, now isn't stenciling fun? Did you ever I've, do that before? I've never stenciled. Oh, you're very good at it. Okay, now quickly lift this up, and when it dries, we'll take the other ones off. These will go in, and you actually made it for him. He's gonna be so pleased. 
No more life on Melrose in a box. <laughs> All right. No more uh, eating out of bowls with the tag still on. No way. I really still wonder if Roscoe is enjoying his dining station. Well, something everyone's still enjoying is my mother's meatloaf. It's one of our most requested recipes. I think last year it was the most requested recipe. She's going to make it when we come back. And later, the ultimate hot chocolate of very delicious good things. My favorite guest to have on the show is my mom, and she actually will come at the drop of a pin. She likes uh, coming on television. She likes sharing, and I think that's probably her best quality. And she's also one of my favorite cooks. Over the years, she has shared so many of her delicious home-cooked recipes with our viewers, and her meatloaf is one of our most requested recipes. Take a look. Mom, your hands are clean, right? Mm -hmm. Insists on clean hands for this, because she's gonna be oh, mixing with her hands. And I'm just grinding up four white bread slices. Okay. So I'm just making bread crumbs out of white bread, regular sliced white bread. Any kind, like Pepperidge Farm or whatever, right? You could use even dry uh, bread that you could soak. Oh, but don't change the recipe. Four slices. <laughs> <laughs> oh we start to elaborate on the recipe and then it's not the same. Okay, so then we're also going to now use the same uh, food processor, two onions that are mm -hmm. peeled and quartered, um, two ribs of celery. Two ribs of celery and, and two carrots. Two big carrots, okay. And I'll just grind those up really fine. And a half a cup of flat leaf parsley because mm -hmm. that's the most fragrant kind. And, uh, oh, two cloves of garlic. Oh, yes, don't forget the garlic. Now, what did you do before you had a food processor? You finally chopped it all by hand, right? Okay. okay. I don't want to get it wet. Very pretty. Okay, and then you add what? And a half a cup ketchup? Yes, we have some ketchup. A little salt you and pepper. You add an egg? I forgot. And an egg. Oh, okay. So a beautiful big egg. Which I mix up a little bit with a fork. Then. Okay, so this is the ketchup? Mm-hmm. Okay. So two teaspoons of dry mustard. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. And um, one tablespoon of salt. One tablespoon of salt. And two teaspoons of black pepper there. All right, as soon as we have this mixed, I can... Start with my hands. Okay, you want to do it? Okay. Mm hmm I don't know if I said how many pounds of beef. Two and a half. Oh, two and a half pounds Makes of beef. Makes a good family-sized meatloaf. Yeah, it does. That looks good. Okay. So we're going to bake it in a loaf pan, a nonstick loaf pan, because it really does keep its shape really nicely. And this is a nine by six loaf pan. And it's so good for sandwiches, and it's so good. It's a real comfort food, Martha. Yeah, it is. That's what it is. Great. And the oven is preheated to what? What do you like to bake it at? About 375. Okay. Then you have two tablespoons of brown sugar, half a cup of ketchup, and a teaspoon of dry mustard. And that makes the glaze... Yeah, and a really pretty glaze, too. It's better than putting bacon on the top, don't you think? I don't care much for bacon I on don't the top. either. I don't either. I like this better. Now, why'd you make those little cuts in the top of the meat? Well, I forgot we had the glaze. <laughs> It'll still look pretty. Yeah. Well, I guess that's it. Well, I'll put that in the oven. And we have one already cooked, okay. which looks delicious. Okay. And come on over here, Mom, and... Let's show us how you take it out. But this is a very good pan because it really is, it really is non-stick. Mm, look at that. It oh. doesn't stick to it, does it? Mm -mm. So do you want me to slice? Yeah, just a little piece. I have to see what it tastes like. It holds together very nicely. Mmm, beautiful. Mmm, very good. 
if you do say so. Mmm. <laughs> Very good, Mom. This is our Meatloaf 101. A great family dinner, a great family snack, and great in sandwiches. Mom's Meatloaf, it doesn't get any better. Next, a sinfully sweet good thing to keep you warm all winter. Welcome back. Here's one of my favorite good things that's perfect for the winter season and always satisfying, ultimate hot chocolate. Here's how you make it. Now, if you like vanilla, you can just scrape a vanilla bean, split it down lengthwise and take out all those wonderful little black vanilla seeds and you just drop that into four cups of boiling milk. Always boil the milk until it's scalding hot because you really want a really hot, hot chocolate. <laughs> And uh, you can flavor with mint if you like mint. You can just steep the mint leaves in for oh, five minutes or so. You can also steep cinnamon sticks in the hot milk, depending on your preference. And once the milk is scalded, add 10 ounces of the very best semi-sweet or milk chocolate. I like milk chocolate or semi-sweet chocolate. And have your cups ready, your spoons, and a big bowl of whipped cream and a little bit of chocolate shavings if you like. You can just use a vegetable peeler to uh, take some uh, little shavings. And just let this mix. I love this after skiing. It is one of my favorite things. Cross country skiing too, great exercise. And once it's melted, ladle it or pour it right into a nice big earthenware cup. It's the ultimate hot chocolate and a little bit just a little bit of whipped cream. And a few. And take a sip. It's a very good thing. This recipe can also be found on MarthaStewart.com. Enjoy yourself. I hope you really like some of our best moments. We're back live tomorrow, so tune in as we have the new year. See you then.